recently we decided to head to California for a trip. And I realized that me and California have a history. Yeah, of course, like most kids, I came here when I was younger with my family to go to Disneyland, but there is a more recent history I have with the state, specifically Los Angeles. I came here in 2019 to head to USC for grad school. My focus was in media and film studies. In this episode of Pages in My Diary, I want to discuss redirection, um, unrequited dreams, and how you look back at your old self. Pages in My Diary is an opportunity for me to show clips of fun things that I'm doing, but also to discuss some of my more emotional feelings and things that I would write in my diary. That's what this series will be all about. Of course, I'm going to discuss some of the things that are happening in the vlog, but at the same time, these videos are a lot more personal, more of an opportunity for me to discuss things that I would write down in my own personal journal and sort of my own experiences and growth. We initially took this trip to go see a rave and it was planned completely last minute. Oh, fuck. I tried to turn it up. <laughs> the volume controls are so dumb. I wanted to turn it up and I turned it off. I the trip went from just staying there for one night into staying there for five days. And while we were there, we got to see a bunch of nature. We got to go on the little ski lifts, which were absolutely beautiful. And this made me think of the fact that while I lived there for only that short period of time, I did not see much of nature or really go outside of the USC campus. One, because I didn't have a car, and two, because I had no money and was living off of a teaching assistant salary, and I spent most of my time not even really enjoying being in California, to be honest. But that was all fine, because I went to USC to chase a goal, to chase a sort of a dream. I wanted to become a professor. I wanted to go get my master's, then get my PhD at USC. It was a big dream. But I think my body was telling me that this was not going to be the dream for me. While I was there, I was experiencing severe stomach pains. I couldn't stomach anything dairy. I had really bad anxiety to the point where I couldn't sleep. And I think my body was telling me that this was not the dream. This was not the place I needed to be. And I think coming to that realization can be difficult, especially when it's not your mind telling you that this is not the dream for you, but your body, which is something you're told to listen to. But it's really hard when your body is telling you that your dream is should not be your dream anymore. Now, I'm not going to blame USC or the environment surrounding the school, even though I do have issues with both of those things. But I will say that during this time there, I was going through so much anxiety and depression and I was kind of willing to just not even face it or think about it until I was close to a breakdown. Then being forced like everybody else at the time to be on lockdown, I realized that there were so many experiences that I didn't really get to have before we were all put into our homes. And I wasted a lot of that chasing a dream that was harming me. Again, I want to reiterate that this is just my experience and my mental health journey and what I went through. I'm sure plenty of people have great stories coming out of USC. But I'm not going to lie, I do look back on this time and do see a girl that was willing to sacrifice her mental health in order to impress people that honestly didn't care. And I don't think I was cut out to be there. Even though I enjoyed my time and I met some amazing people, I don't know if I was meant to be there. So when I go back to California, sometimes I do feel a little bit of a sadness of that girl who was going through all of that 
And then I also feel sadness for how her experience was so wrapped up in a school that she wasn't living life. But I'm happier to be in a better headspace mentally. Yeah, previous Jerry who went to, came to USC for the first time may be very surprised that where I'm at in my life, but I think she'd be really happy that I can now stomach milk. I think she'd also be happy at the fact that we got to go to Disneyland because one of my last experience that I had before COVID hit was that some of my friends went to Disneyland and at the time I couldn't afford to go because I had to pay my rent and I just didn't have the finances so I was really sad I couldn't go but it's nice that I could rewrite that and go now. This trip, along with the one other time I came back to California after graduating from USC, has brought me more love for the state and has also made me feel more comfortable. I no longer look at California or the city of Los Angeles as a failure or someone who didn't chase that dream because she wasn't smart enough or good enough or nobody saw anything special in her. I see something special in myself. I'm trying to learn how to not put stock in what other people say or the things that I have or just some frivolous thing. I'm trying not to do that anymore. And yeah, I'm an unemployed 26 year old, but I'm an unemployed 26 year old who knows who she is more now than she did back then. And I'd rather be in the spot that I'm in now, mentally, physically, everything than I was while I was there. I can have experiences at Disney and feel like a big kid and not feel like I, after this, I'm gonna go home and worry about my future. Even though, I mean, we all worry about our future, but not in the anxiety inducing way that I used to think. The advice I wish I could have told myself before I started USC was that you're going to feel so much pressure, whether it's from your professors or from this weird competition in your head you felt with other students, but that's all in your head and a lot of anxiety that you feel is very personal and stuff that you needed to work out. But at the same time, you need to stay calm and know that things will work out. But of course, hindsight 2020. At the time, I didn't want to let down my parents. I didn't want to make it seem like coming all the way out to USC was a mistake. My parents at first didn't really support the idea of me going to grad school, so I wanted to prove something not only to them, but to, to myself, which can be very relatable. And like I said, things did work out, not in the way I thought they would work out, but they did work out. And sometimes some dreams just aren't for you and it's time to move on. And what is that saying that um, rejection is redirection? I just needed some redirection. Redirection for me meant that I was finally listening to myself, finally listening to my body, finally listening to those voices in my head that were telling me that something was wrong. And that just because this is a dream doesn't mean that it's for you. I'm happy that this trip opened my mind about that. And I'm happy it was relaxing and I got to feel like a big kid. I got to see some friends that I haven't seen in a while. But ultimately, it was a time of reflection, a time to ponder on some of my past, but also my future. So what I would say in closing is to, yes, follow your dreams, of course, but don't let it be at the cost of a good mental health. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next week. Make sure to like and subscribe.